So what we're going to do, guys, is we're just going to open it up now to the floor, and we're just looking for questions just pertaining to marketing, um, whether that's YouTube, so any other kind of social media, or anything else you got. We've got a very successful um, panel up here today, and so let's go ahead and get things started with a question of whatever you guys have. It's always the first one's always painful, and then they start coming in. So, okay, first question right here. So, why don't you go ahead and give me your name, and then uh, go ahead and, and ask your question. Renee Canner, Many Hats Construction. Um, so, which site have you guys found that is the most lucrative to be able to expose your company? So, I'm going to direct this first to Ryan, and then I'll let anybody else who wants to weigh in on that. But, um, what is the best platform that's most lucrative? I would say starting out, are we are we better now on this one? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Good, okay, we're good. I would say starting out, put yourself on as many as you can and figure out on your own which one is working the best and then put your effort into that social media platform. For me, it was YouTube, uh, but I didn't neglect the others. I'm on all the others, pretty successful on the other platforms as well. But for what I'm doing specifically, YouTube is my platform. Uh, but I would try them all, get yourself on all the platforms, put yourself out there as much as you possibly can and then just monitor it and see which one's working for you so i won't just pick one and say well that that six facebook is successful for him i'm going to jump on there no don't do that i would say i think you guys would probably agree uh get on as many as you can and start posting as much as you can and see what works for you uh follow up for you what what kind of work do you do um my husband and i we do decorative concrete uh, restoration we we're from chillicothe ohio um, and we've done the ross county historical society um, chillicothe ohio was one of the first uh, what one of the first state in the state like it's big so we're doing the postmark which was one of the post offices when the first post offices in chillicothe in, in ohio so we're doing more restoration so beautiful so that that's great so everything you described there there's an experience to be captured throughout the process you know there's a journey from the beginning from the preparation of all the different type of projects you're working on uh you know and right now the number one type of media consumed is video period video video so capturing video uh any short form TikTok is very hot right now like you could almost go viral without even trying uh quite literally. So you're asking about which one is the most profitable. I think for for you to establish yourself and, 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 and really have that, that big impact, YouTube is great for capturing the entire project experience from beginning to end. But that takes time and that takes a lot of work, a lot of editing. So these guys have done a great job down there. Um, something that, that, that works right now that you can just get out there is uh, it's just short story, short form stories, captured your day to day. Hey guys, we're gonna be working on this specific piece of this item, stay tuned for more and leave people, you know, take them to that journey and that sequence and educate them into what you're doing. Uh, over time, you're gonna end up with a gallery of a whole bunch of videos and when people Google you or they start looking you up, you're, they're gonna see your, the stuff that you've done. So uh, just leave a footprint everywhere you go. Uh, and something that Rick has done very well is, is capture a lot of footage over time, but also posting images. I think Facebook, in that respect, um, it, from, from what I've noticed is the clients that post a lot of the, the, the pictures and images, it does better. But as far as video uh, consumption, TikTok, Instagram stories, um, you know, stories, and then the long form videos on YouTube, you know, um, that, that, that works very well for brand positioning and getting projects, yeah. I have a uh, follow-up question to this that you guys probably can help everybody with too. So it isn't just the platform, is it? It's also like how Google recognizes everything. Yes. There's more to it than that, right? Yes. So that's the one part that, that like I'm still struggling with, so it's a good question and, and he knows, I ask him all these things all the time. Um, that's, that's what I don't understand is and why it's so important that you said every platform. There isn't just one platform because Google's recognizing everything. And if you're out there on everything, then you're, you're getting, you know, one of the things that, that Danny and I talk about all the time is, do I have to pay to advertise on, on the internet? Or is it, how can I get my name up to the top without having to spend the most money? And the biggest way is to get yourself everywhere possible because Google pays attention to all that. Now, is it not just getting it out there, but also like how you hashtag it or anything? Or is there more to it than that? Or is it just the fact that you get it everywhere? 
Yeah, so two hashtags, you guys gotta create these groups of hashtags. It's number one is location hashtags, like always do, just do that. Number two is, uh, you see a lot of your potential clients aren't, aren't gonna go out and just look for decorative concrete in a hashtag, but there are other things like remodeling ideas, remodeling tips. Those are things that you may not think that you're doing, but actually when you're documenting your work, like those are more trending hashtags than that. So when you marry those and then you tag your, your media with location, that helps out the algorithm. But something we were talking about yesterday is some of these platforms are getting so smart that they recognize your location. You know, you upload a video, they know where you're at. So they, they're sharing that video with more people around that area. I don't mean to hog everything. No, 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 you're, you're blank, you're gone. We're working with a company, it's called Stay Listed, and they advertise that they would help us, you know, get on AOL, Yahoo, uh, Google, and I'm not really happy with them. Yeah. So how would you recommend, I'm familiar with computers, I mean, I do it for my day-to-day -day job, I work at the VA, you know, I'm familiar with computers, so, but, where should we start out first if we don't want to work with? Hire this guy. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, is there a good place to start other than going to gravitate towards stay listed and companies like that? That's a very good question. So so here's what I say. And, and look, there's stop, different types of staff, traffic out there. You have to understand that the consumer that's searching on Google search, like anyone here knows Home Advisor, Home Advisor, anyone's ever purchased, you guys all know this. So their business model is the following. They rank their website on Google, number one, or they pay Google for the ads. They capture the lead and they sell that lead in seven to 12 different ways. Got it? So why not do that for your business? Is is intent-based traffic. So people that are searching for the service in your area, you might as well put in the investment with the right company. I'm not here to, to promote myself, but I'm just saying, you know, someone that understands what it is or you could do it yourself. So Google my business listing or Google business profile, make sure that you're constantly getting reviews for the services that you, that you offer. And number two is your website is what will help you get found there. And then you have platforms like Pinterest, which is another search engine type of platform post all, all your pictures, you know, Rick Labdell is blown up there, you know, in Pinterest. And then YouTube is another search engine with video where people are searching for ideas. So it's not one platform that's gonna get you all the clients and customers, you kind of have to be, and nowadays the consumer goes to three different places before they decide to pick up the phone and call you. So you have to, by default, kind of build all of them out. Well, and another point to that too is that he, sh he taught me was with Google, for example, it's not this that you make a Google account and you put all your stuff in there, but then people will actually, because they're so tech savvy compared to me, they're contacting me through Google. Like I thought that it was always gonna be like through social media or whatever, but I all of a sudden every, every once in a while get a lead through Google where they found me on there. That's a whole nother world. I'm still trying to understand on top of that. And, but Google pays attention to everything. So if you go on there and someone sends you, and he's been on my case a few times, if someone sends you I'm interested in, in a, in a, a um, bid, you know, stuff like that. They, uh, if you don't get back to them within 24 hours, Google flags you. Like, so they keep you serious. Like you're either with them or not, and they're not gonna mess around with you. And those kind of things are extreme, but it's important for everything. You should be doing that anyway. You shouldn't have to be told to do that, but it's more interesting. Cause like, if you're in the middle of a job site or like right now, if I get a lead right now and I'm here, I got 24 hours to just at least contact them. It's not that I need to call them right away, but I, they at least have to see that I've replied to them and followed up with them because that's what keeps you looking good and that's what they want to see. So those kind of things are pretty awesome and it, and it trains you to do that through everything why you know you should be and that helps. Right? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions on that? That answers it? All right. You're going to stand up. And... That's right. Okay, so let's go with, with, with your name and where you're from and what your question is. Dave McGuire, Anderson, Indiana. Um, I don't really have a question. I got a comment. Uh, I've been in the automotive business my entire life, and one of the 
easiest way to get your business to the top of the Google list is by hits. It's just like getting famous on Google. The more hits you get, the more Google recognizes you, and the higher up the list you go. So that's the way that works. That's what I've seen in 30 years. That's all I got to say. Yeah. All right, name where you're from and go ahead with your question. Joe Bando, Columbus, Ohio. Thank you uh, for the panel for uh, being here today. My question would be, how do you handle negative reviews or negative comments? You know, because we all know the positive side, but there's also this negative side that we have to deal with that keeps us up at night, right? Get up at two o'clock in the morning thinking about that job or that comment that somebody made. So that would be my question for the panel. I think I'll take this one. Uh, on YouTube, I get thousands and thousands and thousands of comments, and uh, some of them are negative. Some of us were having this discussion just amongst ourselves last night, and uh, negative comments are, are a difficult thing. It's my opinion that concrete work, uh, it's one of the most difficult industries. I think we're some of the toughest guys out there, but emotionally, I don't care how tough you are, some of those negative comments can touch you in a place that, you know, it's difficult, it's hard, and it takes time. It took me quite a while, and I'm not gonna say I'm like immune to it yet, but what I found to be the most helpful is you if you're gonna answer the neg a negative comment at all, answer it positively. Say, hey man, I understand, but you know, there's a perspective you didn't understand here, and, and you know, we were just doing this or whatever, and I, I hope you have a great day or whatever. And a lot of the times they'll comment back to me, and they'll completely back off their negativity and be like, oh man, you know, I, I actually do like your channel. You know, I was just having a bad night. Some people admit that they were drinking or they had just been fighting with their wife or whatever. And all of a sudden you took somebody that you thought hated you, didn't actually hate you, and you formed a relationship with them. Now they like you and they're, they're like your biggest fan. So the negative comments, you're gonna have guys that are just complete idiots. There's people that are morons out there that are just trolling the internet because they want to fight with either you or your audience uh, on youtube you can remove them i recommend that you just remove them from the comment section permanently that's what i do if you can tell they're just there to harass uh, otherwise uh, comments are good uh, even like there's a big difference between criticism and then just slamming you you leave the criticism alone that's okay that's fine uh, but if they get personal i remove them and it does take time emotionally to get over that stuff. It never gets easy, it gets easier. Um, but that's how you deal with that. You don't, you don't hammer them back, because if you hammer them back, even though your argument is superior to, those, to theirs, you might even make them look stupid. Your audience isn't gonna like you fighting back. They're gonna call me thin-skinned. They're gonna say that I look petty for arguing back. So you don't argue back. I learned that pretty quick. So don't fight back. So either be positive or leave it alone or remove them from the platform in the comment section. I think on the um, on the review side, like I, I think if you're talking about like Google reviews or whatever, getting bad reviews, something we just started doing was that we just ask every customer, that, you know, are you happy when we finish? And if they say yes, then we put them into a, a, a campaign where like they'll get a text message saying, hey, will you leave us a review on Google? And it'll follow up three or four times, and then hopefully we'll we'll nag them to death until they do it. And the idea is just that you're you're burying the bad ones. You don't you don't they don't need to. I don't I don't think that when people are looking us up on Google, I, I think they just kind of scan through there. I, I I think as long as there's like a, a a greater number of good ones, I think it's not that big of a deal. And I would follow up with this: don't be afraid. And a lot of guys aren't like tech savvy, but a lot of guys a lot of you guys are. Don't be afraid to ask for Google reviews with your happy customers. I'll ask my customers, hey, if they're really happy, most of them are, I'll say, hey, if you could just take a second to leave a Google review, because if you really impress a customer, they, like, they feel like they want to do something extra for you, so they're actually eager to leave a Google review. And if you have a whole ton, if you have more Google reviews than all of your competition, guess who's calling you? everybody that was always yeah. my go-to move um you know dealing with customers it was if they say hey man this was such a great experience what can we do to help you out that was always my answer is the best thing you can do to help is is leave a google review and don't tell them it has to be good just ask them to leave a review because if they're happy that's going to happen naturally so yeah something I, I like to say is it's it's complicated i mean concrete you know it's going to break things are going to happen weather's going to happen right you acknowledge those things so something you could do to help you get less negative reviews over time is just that education process with your 
with your customer, but also let, let that be a page on your website. Hey, what happens with weathering? What happens with application? What may happen? What may be some of those things? And have a process to deal with that on the side versus them just going online. Uh, but just responding to the negative reviews too, because uh, a lot of times you get very unreasonable negative reviews uh, and acknowledging uh, the situation and you know what might have gone wrong just to let the other people that are reading the review get context in, in what that looked like. Uh, so that may help out in the negative. Uh, and it doesn't hurt too, because sometimes, like I'm looking at uh, someone came by the booth and they were showing us their profile and they're like, man, they, should, they posted three, four pictures of the job and all that. Well, I said, you realize like they, they actually just uploaded pictures that are geotagged with, with the location, you know, in, in the review. So more reviews, uh, someone talked about more clicks, more engagement, that will help your, your business go up. But now more than ever, just be proactive about every client giving you a, a review, like be proactive about that. Cause that's the future. Uh, times are gonna get a little bit rougher here, you know, at some point in time soon, the most reputable company always tends to come back on top. So just keep that in mind. Let me just say one last thing. As far as reviews go, I was mentioning comments, but as far as reviews go, normally a Google review or online review, that's not a, you know, a customer's first resort. Normally they're gonna contact you with a complaint, right? Hey, we got a problem over here. Never, never ignore complaints. Go handle the complaint, because if you handle your business, it's rare that it'll ever get to the point where they get to leaving you a negative review. If you handle the situation like a professional, I'm not saying it never happens because you will get, everybody gets negative reviews, but most of the time you can avoid a negative review if you hit it head on and hit it fast and satisfy that customer to the best of your ability. Sometimes they're not completely satisfied, but you tried, you did your best. You you told them you're gonna monitor the situation. You, you made a, you know, you made a report about it, you know about the problem, and they know you did something, they know you're trying, so they're gonna give you some leeway and they're not gonna slam you on the internet. Answer your question, Joe, appreciate it. All right, who's next? The guy in the pink Frank Sinatra hat up there, it's cool. We are now getting into concrete Graving and pictures for the first time, and, and we say it, they've been told you got a lot of knowledge. So we'd like to speak to you when we're done, and get some ideas on what tools to buy. Absolutely. All right, who's next? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, my name is Nick. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Nick. Uh, hi, hi, Rick, how are you? <laughs> Doing great. Good. Um, this might be a silly question, so I've been sort of lucky as in like getting work and leads and stuff like that. My question is, is there a difference between marketing and advertising? Like for example, like I like to do decorative concrete, so I wanna do like, like certain areas, you know, around me. If you have, just for easy talking, if there's like a hundred and Fifty thousand dollar house, you know, they're not going to put say a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in their backyard. Is there a way to like, or what's the best way to like just market say houses on the lake? Beside, like, does that make sense or? Mm -hmm. sorry, yeah. Anybody want to start? Yeah. So, <clears throat> platforms uh, like Facebook, Google, that just let you target specific zip codes or or radius. You could put addresses. So say you just finish a project in a, in a very affluent area. You literally can go to Facebook as of now, as of today, and put that address in there. And now you just say, hey, I just want to go one mile around this specific you know, area. Now, I'm just going to share that the di there's a difference between search traffic and push traffic which is like social media traffic. The social media traffic, there you might get a lot more leads than in Google, but then the quality of the lead is bad because they're not shopping you, they're not. So there's gotta be a balance in there. Um, and this is where YouTube ads come in. YouTube ads, not a lot of guys are doing YouTube ads, but I encourage you guys, advertising. Have you guys watched a video on YouTube and seen like the first five, 30 seconds, there's a, 
an ad volume. Well, what if you were to target the affluent areas who are looking for new remodeling ideas or are looking at HGTV show, and then there you go, a very affluent area with a nicely you know, mm. uh, produced video of, of your work. Now you get leads where you want them, where you want them. And then Google lets you do that too, you know? Yeah, that's, um, I've been doing that, you know, yeah. when I first started a couple years ago, but I was just wondering like, how do you, is there a way to get like, those bigger jobs for say where it's more than just say a stamp patio and a fire pit you know yes, like maybe yes. some carving some this that well one of the things you when you look at those details i mean they narrow it down to the income the pre the 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 type of house like the household income or the or the even how expensive the houses are so you really just have to corner your market into exactly what you're looking for that can afford it because in all reality we all know that those things are a luxury Nobody has to pay to do what, half the stuff we do, especially with a lot of the stuff I do. You know, they have to pay these guys to pour concrete. They don't have to pay me to make it look good. You know, so we are a luxury tax, if you think about it that way. So we have to go for the luxury people. The person with a $150,000 house probably can't afford me. You know, so I know where my market is. I know my market is between 750000 and $3 million. When you go over $3 million, they don't care. They have all the money in the world. They don't think about what we do. They, they do real stone and all sorts of stuff. So there's that, that knowledge of where exactly I need to market and the people that I'm looking for that can't afford what I want to do. And that you just have to find, figure all that stuff out and, practice, you know, and test it and try to see those kind of details. So like to find those like, people that want to spend more money for a backyard for say like outdoor living, just open your radius to like that area? Well, not even just the radius, but yeah, if you know enough about Cleveland, you know where those homes are, you know where those zip codes are. And yes, you can literally go into that pinpoint. You can pinpoint more than you realize. You just have to experiment and practice and, and learn. And it takes a while. I mean, I've done it multiple times and then I finally gave up and, and hired him because it's a lot of work. It is. I mean, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's just, why, why can't, it's not easy to do at all. But the more you narrow it, the more you focus on the people that you're looking for, you just got to get used to it. Yeah, because like the, you know, the calls, you know, are coming in all day, like the leads are there, but it's like, hey, I need a apron or hey, I need this, which is like, you could charge them, you know, whatever, you're still making money, but stuff that like I want to do, you know, that's. Well, you know, the other thing to that too is that's getting your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've had, I've had clients, I used to send postcards out back in the day before we had all of this social media and stuff. And I'd have people save my postcard for a year or two years because they knew they wanted me when they were ready for me. I've had sales calls I've gone into and gone, oh, I know you're, you've called me to, to take care of this walkway, but what's going on with your front porch? What are you doing back here? So it's, I also ask all those questions and just the way I handle those situations, they may not say yes, but then the neighbor brings it up and goes, oh yeah, he was talking about that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it becomes how you present yourself in every single uh, job and you know that everybody's gonna talk to each other. You know, one of the things I love in Nashville is there's a certain area of Nashville. It's funny in the south side of Nashville, everybody wants to outdo their neighbors. So they all talk to each other. They all and I get referrals all the time. The north side of Nashville, they don't even know their neighbors. It's the weirdest thing in the world. I can, I've gone in and done two neighbors and I'm like, did they refer you? They're like, no, I don't talk to them at all. And I'm like, what? You know, so you have to know your market. It doesn't work every single time. Um, and then you have to decide, hey, do I need to focus on those people that aren't talking? Or do I need to just let that figure itself out and just focus on the people that are because I know that that's working for me. So you just gotta find those areas of Cleveland. On a real practical level, <clears throat> if you can find somebody that likes to do those smaller jobs, like maybe a two man crew or whatever, mm -hmm. that's a great thing. You, have, you know, you kind of take the phone call. Hey, what do you need? Is that all you're gonna be needing? You know, make sure that they don't have other stuff in mind that could be a job you're interested in. But if you can, if you can give them a name and a number of a guy you do that does nice work, that's really golden because you satisfy them. Because if you just tell somebody, well, we don't do small jobs, sometimes that'll irritate them enough to leave you a negative review online. Right, right. So if you could find somebody like that, I have somebody like that, it's really golden to get rid of those phone calls, you know, shove it off on somebody else. But, but respect them and then kind of, you know, you did them a little bit of a favor in their mind. Sure. So that helps. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. All right, who's next? All right, so I got a question for you, Danny. Is there, at what point do you get to a separation where, kind of building on Nick's comment here is, you know, he's kind of looking to sell himself more as an artist and to sell him 
to sell his work in that fashion as opposed to just advertising just decorative concrete. Is there a separation point there or do you have any thoughts on that as far as separating Nick the artist from the name of his business? You want to go? You want to go? I asked you to go. So here, here's the thing. I've had this conversation with him multiple times. Is a lot. Like, do you want to be known as Rick Labdell, decorative concrete artisan, like an actual artisan, or concrete mystique? You know, so you got to realize you got to build the brand of the business because you're going to be quoting business. You're going to be putting out bids for jobs under your business name. And at some point in time, the business, if you want to be profitable, multi-million dollar company, it's going to outgrow you being in there. So there's got to be a fine balance that you got to realize, okay, I'm ready to empower other people to come and do the work. So when you're at that point in time, I think that's where you got to start taking your, your, your brand really more serious, you know, to, to kind of say, okay, it's going to be the brand versus the, the individual, you know, but in the beginning you have to market yourself. You really have to get the respect in the community. How do you guys do it? You, you're still under your yeah we just we that, just kind of market under our personal names on your personal and then we have like a business too so yeah. like um i kind of think that this kind of goes back to what the most profitable social media thing is i kind of think that it's it's whatever you can do to um create engagement like directly with the person because and, and ryan mentioned this to earlier us earlier on the podcast when you go to a job and the person sees you and this particularly works well with YouTube, like when you're talking a lot to the camera and that kind of thing. When you go there and the person sees you, the job is kind of already sold because they already feel like they know you. Um, so we kind of feel like, you know, we, we market our business like our website and we run our ads for our website. But as far as like the social media goes, that's more of like us individually, I think. It's not, mm -hmm. not necessarily like speaking as a company. So you guys, are, do you target more polished concrete? Do you target more coatings? Do you target more stamped concrete? Or is it just put everything in one basket and see what comes in? Yeah, we, we pretty much target it all. And then we, but back on, which is great referral here, when, when we get work we don't want to do, or maybe it's just too small, or maybe it's just too small. We have guys set up in a referral program that are friends of ours that send it out and it's just like we won't get that negative review. We'll get, you know, they're happy with what, hey, you know, we couldn't do it. They couldn't do it, but they referred them. I was just wondering how how do um like get that get the bigger. more fun you're looking yeah. for well, the more entertaining also work, more, yeah. Uh, yeah. stuff to do like stamping, carving, building fire pits, steps. If you have a passion for that and you find that passion within the work you already have, mm -hmm. sell them a little bit of something. Maybe they look at this and they say. Well, he carved me a turtle. I didn't need a turtle, <laughs> you know, yeah, but it's yeah. awesome. Whatever. Yeah. You see, he stamped me this. So you, you move to your to your passion and it'll it'll grow, you gotcha. know? Cool. Just, just another point to that too. Okay. I have a master of fine art and painting. I'm not painting my paintings on the floors. No one could afford that. No one wants that. I'm not an idiot about that. I'm completely aware of the fact that I separate these two worlds completely. They don't go together. Even when I made a seven foot tall pink bunny out of concrete, it still doesn't merge the two worlds together. Yes, that one. Yeah. <laughs> and so one of the things I tell people all the time is, I know you want to do this crazy, elaborate, insane design that no one's ever done or you've never got to do, and you're hoping to find that client that's going to say, I want that. They're not going to. But what they are going to do is bring you something similar that's enough to make you satisfied in doing some really creative stuff. You got to find those. So it's not a, I'm going to get, I'm going to do this one thing. It's going to be a buildup of the more you get to be playful with some cool clients, the more you're gonna hit that goal. So you just kinda take it one step at a time, but it is finding those people, like we are talking about with like finding that market. It's, it's a tough thing to find the market, but it's there. It's not hard to find, it's just getting to it. But you have to decide when you get to it that you wanna do, I always think about every client that I work with, it's what they want, it's not what I want. It's their house, their money, their luxury, However you want to look at it, I focus on finding ways to make them happy and I get happy either way. You know, no, I don't get to make my artwork all the time, but I love their reaction. I love the satisfaction of the job getting done, you know, especially here right now with what I'm doing out there. I mean, DecoCrete's freaking out about what I'm doing. This is awesome. That's what I, that's what I wanted. They're so excited about my design before I even started because they saw the bigger picture of what I was trying to do. That's what I want. 
I'm not here just doing my artwork. I'm doing something I knew they wanted to see. I catered to them on purpose. Do you have a do you have a backlog, a decent backlog, of like work booked usually? So I would say that the biggest thing for us to be able to, to do the things that we want to do is we started saying no to things that we didn't want to do, um, knowing that we, that's going to affect our long term and it's going to affect our backlog. But like, um, if you want to do like carving or whatever, then you got to say no to garage aprons because they take a lot of time. You know, it, it's like. I just, I hate I know, I know. It's it's hard to pass that money, but that's the money, tough thing in the business. That that you know, you got to run a business, right? So. I know you get you think you're passing up money, but you, you're not because you're you're passing up the jobs that that you don't. You pass up the little ones. You cast a wide net uh, net to get as many leads as you can, and you and you pass on the ones you don't want because you're booked for a year. So it's nothing wrong with being booked for three or four months, and then and then you're waiting on the the period past the three months. You're like waiting for good jobs that you want. You don't need to be booked a year like that. You know, I, I don't know. This, I don't. I know it's kind of stressful to pass on a backlog, but you kind of have to do that if you want to do what you want to do. Is you know, I had um, just say up till a month ago, I had work till say July. Well, anyways, I, I feel bad when I don't return calls or I don't. I still go on estimates, but I mean. It, I don't know. I'm, I'm bidding them super high, and they're like, "Okay, when can you start?" So it's like I'm gonna make time to. Yeah. I just charge yeah, you yeah. thirty dollars a square foot on a two thousand square. You know what I mean? So it's like, I like the mo you know, the, the, I like to do the work. It's just I want to do like the cool stuff all. One the time. practical thing that you could try, and we have several like in my area in, in Wisconsin near Milwaukee, but your your local trade shows, uh, your home improvement shows, those are. Those are phenomenal. If you have, if you live in a city that has those, I highly recommend it. But you can set up a booth because you're, you're going to have thousands of people walking through the show that own homes. They're looking to spend money on their homes, and you can be there, and you could you could do a dynamite booth. You do the type of work that you're looking for. There's going to be a lot of people walking through with money, looking to spend. And when you have something that they've never seen before, they're going to they're going to be drawn to your booth. You can pick up. I guarantee you, you could get a bunch of jobs. If you have, I don't know, do you have a local remodeling shows in your area? Uh, there's some, I mean, yeah, with the COVID yeah, stuff. Yeah. That you was, should you, know, you should try them. I've been doing them for over 20 years regularly, <laughs> and they are fantastic. You will sign, I sign hundreds of thousands of dollars off of each show, That's just so. to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. And they're, no, they're, it, it's the a people, very good point. The people are coming to you. Mm -hmm. You're not out in the, you know, in the interweb somewhere. People are, you're trying to get people to find you. People are coming to talk to you. Mm -hmm. You just sit there, man. And they're coming and they want yeah. you right. and it's it's really the ideal situation no it's, it's a very good point because you're you're able you can go to that booth and you can go i only want to show them vertical i don't even want to show them that i even pour concrete mm. yeah. that's up to you you know it, it's it's investment for you it's your time it's your money and things like that mm. but that is a, a great way to kind of show off and say there's another market these people don't even realize exists mm -hmm. you know yeah. and and it's how you market yourself on everything and it's just taking it one step at a time yes you got to find that first job but then once you find that job too just like he does too, you gotta make sure you film the crap out of it and document the crap out of it and put it out there to everybody or they're not gonna know that you did it once. Right, right. You know, that's the other part to it too, is what are you going to do to show that market that you can do that once you finally find those jobs? Because it only takes a couple. Within a few years, you could be the go-to guy in your market that everybody knows that this does this type of work. You're the guy, you could do it in three years, I'm telling you. Sweet, thank you. All right, anybody else have any, anything? So Ryan, I'm curious at this point, when you get a call for your concrete business, cause I'm assuming your concrete business and your YouTube business is almost two separate things at this point, or you look at them as two separate things. For when you get those calls coming in for your concrete business, what percentage of those are coming from people that seen you on YouTube or have you noticed a big spike in that at all? So when it comes to social media, when you start out on a platform, like you gotta ask yourself, what's my purpose? Why am I getting on this platform? So there, one, like what you mentioned, you might wanna start on social media because you want potential customers to find you so you can get more work. I wasn't in that position. I've been in business for a long time, going on my 24th year. I really wasn't looking to market more and get more work. I have way, many, way too many calls how it is. I started it as a completely separate business. Um, 
and, and that's how I looked at it. I mean, if you watch my YouTube channel, it's kind of goofy, it's entertainment. So if somebody will watch it like, wow, those guys, I really want that guy to do my concrete. There are, there, are, there are a bunch of people that call because they think it's fun. They want me to do their work. They see that I do nice work, but it's also fun at the same time. But that's not why I started the business or why I started YouTube business. Um, so you gotta ask yourself that question. So no, I, I didn't really market it that way. I made it a silly channel, entertaining channel for that reason. But you could do YouTube very professional. You could really showcase your work step by step, how I poured this set of steps, make really nice videos, and then link those videos in your website. Uh, you could do the process of color. How many times you guys at Color and Stamp have to sit there in front of a customer, then we throw the color hardener on, and then we both load it in, and then we put the release, and then we grab the mat, and then we wash it, and then we seal it. You can make a video showing the whole process, put a video link in your website, say, go watch the video, it's gonna show you everything about Stamp Concrete. The customer, or potential customer, sees you know what you're doing. Wow, this guy made it, look at this job he did, this is awesome. They understand it. They're way more comfortable when you come. You don't have to explain everything that you're doing. They're like, oh yeah, that's just like the video. So you can really use YouTube videos and links to your website as your benefit. It'll save you time uh, explaining everything to customers. So that kind of answers your question. I went off a little bit, but uh, YouTube can be you know, used in different ways, so. No, for sure, and, and, and you too, it, I mean, I know you guys have a fairly decent YouTube channel. It, have you guys marketed that way or was your channel more focused on kind of Ryan's angle? I think it's you know similar to what Ryan's doing. We're kind of looking at it as a separate business. But as far as, as was, was the goal to um, grow a YouTube channel or to actually potentially get jobs from that YouTube channel? Well, initially, initially we were just, we wanted to handpick jobs, yeah. right? That's true. So that was our goal. It was, it was very different than Ryan. We were integrating it. Um, and man, when they find you and they watch a couple videos and you show up at their house, it's done. Right? It is, yeah. I mean, I, we haven't had one. And, and also as far as the YouTube, Ryan, Ryan just said the explaining of throwing the car no harder, going through all that. I was at a site the other day, we're polishing inside. He had all this <clears throat> outdoor things he needed done. And he explained it, I just sent him right to YouTube. He's like, this is exactly what I need. You know, Tim had made a video on trout overlays. I saw know? that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's been awesome for us in that way. But yeah, we didn't, wouldn't you say that? Yeah, we did. We're just trying to, like I said earlier, we try to get as many leads as we can to kind of cherry pick the jobs we want. And that was just part of that strategy. The other thing too, is when it, if you're intimidated by doing videos all the time, just do short ones. You know, like even what he said, you could make 10 different videos to, to accomplish that one video. So you're not doing it all at one time because it takes a lot of effort, a lot of editing. So you can start and just do, here's how you just put the color hardener down and just make that one little tiny video just to get used to making videos. The other thing I did, I mean, I spent years filming before I ever edited a single one. I just knew I had to document what I did. I didn't know how to do anything with it. I didn't know how to edit. So I just documented and documented and documented until I finally sat down and started to learn how to edit. And, and I got better and better at it and it took a long time. So, you know, you can, you can, you don't have to be intimidated by making this, this 20 minute video of every little detail of how you need to do this. It could be a 30 second video on just how to throw a color hardener. It could be a 30 second video on just how to seal. And you could put those all on your website and go, look, just watch, you can watch anything you need to know about what we're about to do. And, and you give them the play by play and then you can learn how to put that all into one. You can look at it both ways. Um, I know that every time I try to do a longer video, I always forget to say one thing. I always make a mistake here. It's always overwhelming. And I've learned, I've been enjoying doing a lot of smaller videos and then I can decide if I need to put them into one big one. But it, it's less intimidating to try to just focus on one little goal. And also, Tim and I, and most, most of us up here, we've been watching Bob Harris for years, right? So when he shows up at our house, if, if I wanna hire, that guy shows up, he's, he's hired, you know? Just because what you've been watching, he knows what he's doing, he's, it, it just shows off the videos, so. Very, a, a legitimacy thing. It's, yeah. it's, it, when you mm -hmm. see somebody that over and over and over constantly, all right. of a sudden, if you got a job to do, you know, you know who you're calling, yeah. so. Absolutely. So you guys, um, you got to. Um, I think I saw Tim where you made a video where you, you kind of explained how you handle some leads. Like say you get a hundred leads and you only want five of those. How are you not spending all of your time telling people no? You know, what process do you have to help uh, process that so that it's timely for you and you still get the leads you want? 
So Landon and I are business partners. So when the leads come in, he handles the, the polished concrete part and a, and a few other type things. So like we're splitting, we're splitting the, you know, the duty on, on half of that. Um, and then as far as like being able to quickly respond to people, we have, I have two ways to do it. I have one at my email system that I use has a bunch of saved replies. It's called help scout. And it's literally if, if a, a lead comes in that we don't want, I literally, I literally click one button, it replies to them, it copies my, my friend in that does similar kind of work and it tells them, Hey, you should hire this guy. So it's, you know, it can be done pretty quickly. It's just a matter of like what software you use. And then on the, if it comes in via text message, I have a software called Text Expander. It's just an app that you use. I have like 20 saved replies because everyone asks the same question, like over and over. I answer the same thing over and over. And it, it's literally just a one button click. So we, we actually are able to do it without an office staff. It's just us doing it. Yeah, I want to give a, a plug into a Creek Quote. If you have not checked it out, it's great for vetting out the, the leads, especially the ones that get price shocked when you present pricing up front. It's a great system. And for those that are getting a ton of leads, um, over flooded. So make sure you stop by the booth, check it out. It kind of gives you a good visual. Also, it, it, it generates a lot, helps you generate a lot of leads too. Uh, so it does both jobs, uh, you know, of qualify, helping you qualify those that are within your price range, that are okay within your price range and uh, generate more leads. Yeah. Yeah. I've talked to numerous, numerous people uh, that use Creek Quote and man, that just sounds like such a, such a great system. What about um, equipment a little bit, just across the board as far as, um, you know, starting with you, Ryan, do you put a big, um, is, is, is all your focus on quality? Are you looking about quality of content, quality of video, um, just a little bit of what kind of equipment you use and did you spend a lot of money up front getting started or what's the best way to get started? So that's the beauty of social media is you can get started for next to no money if you have one of these, which everybody does, right? You can video everything. I mean, iPhones, the video quality is excellent. You can make great videos using just your iPhone. There's apps where you can learn how to edit on your iPhone. You can make great videos from start to finish. You can upload to YouTube. You can put it on, you know, all the social media platforms um, just using your phone. So there's not a big investment to get started uh, at all. You can spend big money, obviously, you know, if you're doing SEO stuff and getting, you know, deeper in the in internet and website search stuff. Uh, but as far as social media goes, you can get started for nothing, man. And uh, I did buy some equipment initially. I didn't use my phone. Uh, like GoPros work really good if you're on a construction site because they're going to get beat up. They're very durable. They're rugged. The video quality is decent. They're not great cameras, not by any stretch of the imagination, but they'll get the job done. So if you're, if you're making videos to showcase your work, you're going to want some pretty good video. Uh, for me, I'm more of a vlogger where I'm showing my day-to-day -day life. You know, I'm waking up in the morning, I'm taking out the garbage, I'm saying goodbye to my kids. Then I'm going and pouring concrete with my guys. So it's more a raw video. That's my style of YouTube. Like, I want people to feel like they're on a job site, living my day out alongside of me. So uh, I know some of these guys like down here, they're more, they're more interested in like high quality video, getting the cinematic, you know, shots, uh, just the right angles and all that stuff. It's, that's not something you really have to worry about. Just start messing around with your camera, watch other people's videos like, wow, look at how he moves the camera from the left to the right, where you'll zoom in on that shot and just slowly start seeing how other people do it. And you can get great shots. I mean, you can, you can make great videos just using your phone, not much investment. But if you wanna get into it and take it seriously, you know, wait until you get good on your phone, you know, learn how what you're doing, learn how to edit. Don't make a, you don't have to make a big investment up front. Uh, just start to learn the process. Like what you were saying, I think what you were getting to is, where do I even start? It's every platform, there's, an, there's a learning curve. You gotta learn it. So jump on Facebook, see what everybody else is doing. Go on Instagram and see what everybody else is doing. Watch YouTube videos uh, in the same niche that you're in. What, is, what are other people posting? Um, and then figure out like, how can I make my style a little bit different where people are gonna wanna watch me more than them? So just start educating yourself. It's, it's uh, you can teach yourself. I didn't learn from, nobody taught me. I just sat down on my computer, watched YouTube videos, read, studied, you know, bought some, you know, Final Cut Pro editing software. You, you just start, just like, you know, just like how you learn just about everything on a computer. You mess around with it until you start learning and you get it. It takes time, it's an investment. 
uh, but I, everybody can do it. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not above intelligence by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just a guy that pours concrete, you know, that's all I am. And I learned how to do it and I'm pretty good at it now. It, anybody can do it, honestly. An average Joe can do it. It just takes some time learning, that's it. It's easy. Something else that Ryan mentioned last night, he's like, you know, even if you don't think you can even get started with this, everybody's got some kids that are about that age where get them to start working on that stuff because yeah, sure. they'll get into it and really dig that stuff. So, Danny, you have anything on any of that? Yeah, so definitely the latest iPhone, that's as far as you need as far as camera equipment, more than enough. Just make sure that you have enough storage. Then you have the, you, you want to get a stabilizer, phone stabilizer, DJI. Uh, I mean, they're, they go for about 150 bucks on Best Buy, iPhone stabilizer. That helps out make the video looks very smooth and you don't need to spend a lot of money. That's very inexpensively. And then if you want to to uh, have good audio, which I think everyone here should, if you're gonna take this seriously, is just get a, a, a wireless camera, is um, the, the Rhodes uh, Wireless Go is the camera that you want and you just tie it in and, and that's it it's very very good i mean it doesn't matter about the noise that's going on in the background you capture a very good uh mic yeah yeah, yeah um the one thing you want to watch out for with the gopro is interior they're very grainy if they don't have good lighting for exterior no problem yeah. whatsoever but if you i do a lot of interior work too um, my GoPros fail every single time. They're getting better, but they still get very grainy. So you have to be aware of that. Your phone won't do that. Your phone will handle it. Most of them will. So it's always safer to still try to do the phone as much as you can, really. Um, and then the funny thing, the other, you know, from what he, like how he was doing, I do a lot of editing, but what cracks me up is to go back five years ago and see how bad I was at filming compared to what I am now you know, how much better I'm getting at editing. I want to go back and start all over again now and, and just fix every mistake I've ever made, being too long or too much detail that nobody cares about or why did this film not do it? You know, why did no one pay, pay attention to it? it? It makes me laugh all the time at where I started compared to where I've gotten to. And again, it's just practice and being aware of that. And it's okay because we all go through it. You know, you got to start somewhere. You guys? I mean, I, I agree with what they said. I mean, the GoPros are great outside. Um, and then inside, I use a, just a mirrorless camera. I use a nice Sony camera inside because it does better in low light. But I don't think you need any of that, though. I think, I mean, I think the, a GoPro is fine to do any, you know, any of the stuff that we do. But Yeah, and they're, what, like 450 bucks? Like, yeah. you, can, you can get into them, into them really cheap. So as we go along here, guys, um, does anybody have any questions? All right, so... Uh, a little bit about, um, and, and just for all of you guys, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, if, if, we're re if, if you're using the video as the message, do you guys give any thought to title, the, uh, description, that kind of stuff? Yeah, this one's on you guys. <laughs> so, so one of our favorite ones is um, they tried to get us drunk. I remember that one. Yeah, right, right. And that's what we did at brewery, right? And uh, just at the end of the, the day, the, the brewery said, hey, guys, the taps are open. So Tim and I were talking and they were like, they tried to get us drunk. That was the name of, that was the, name of the video. Now, uh, we didn't, try, we didn't get drunk. We didn't, we didn't do any of that, but it was just, just, a, just something like that. Just something funny. It made me click on it. The, yeah, the, the we're just title. trying to be fun, you know? It definitely matters. I mean, it can't be like, I'm staying in this patio. I mean, that's, you know, it has to be something that's interesting. So yeah, we put a, we put a lot of thought into it, but I think this one's for Ryan down there. Yeah, like titles are very important. You. It, not only not only your thumbnail if it's youtube but you want to describe what you're doing you want to give people an idea of what you're actually doing in the video but you want to do it in, a, in the most interesting way possible i guess that's the best way to describe it you want to catch people's attention if nobody clicks on your video nobody watches your video i mean it's right it's, it's common sense so that's like the first step is you got to get somebody to actually click on your video so the thumbnail has to be something interesting. If there's some kind of drama during the day, definitely like try to show that or get people's yeah. attention. So yeah, thumbnails are super important because it's the beginning of the chain where people start to watch your videos. So it's true. So my old videos that I think are terrible, they're not terrible because of the filming, it's because I have a terrible title. <laughs> it's good to know. You can always retitle them though. I know. <laughs> We're all learning something here. 
Danny, as far as that goes, is there any any great resource as far as, you know, people just figuring out what the best, you know, search words are? And, and you know, for somebody who's just brand new at it and I have no idea what to title things, um, what, what are some resources for that? Yeah, so there's a couple of uh, Chrome browser plugins. One of them is vidIQ, uh, V-I-D-I-Q. You install it, you go to YouTube, and then it's going to show you stats on different videos that are performing. So I... I would reverse engineer what he's done. He's done all the heavy work for me. He's the number one. Now I can see what's working best for him and his channel and kind of work my way back and see terms, keywords that, that are relevant. So that would be a great place to start. Uh, there's a couple of other paid tools that, that we have access to, but that's the one that I would say, vidIQ. Uh, and then make the searches too. Like just go to the YouTube, make a search about Stamp Concrete, see what pops up on the top. And, uh, and you get to see that. But uh, it's usually title, the description is also a place in the video where you have to reinforce what the title says. And then another, I don't know if you do this, but I know he does it, is he re-emphasizes in the beginning of the video, hey guys, I'm gonna walk you through, and then you speak the keyword because the algorithm actually listens to it. So you're using the, the search term in three different ways, the title, the introduction and then the the description of the video. Yeah, you can also use uh, Google Trends. It's called Google Trends, and you can actually type in a search word, search whatever your you know your topic is, and then you can you know you might want to title it two different ways. You can type in one word, and then Google Trends will show you how popular that search has been over time. It'll give you a graph, and then you can type in another word, what you might otherwise title it, and it'll compare the two, which is getting more search traffic. So I've been using that, and I'll obviously just figure it out what more people are searching for, and I'll use those words. So Google Trends has been great. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I do a lot of tag, uh, names tags, yeah. on, on the the, my YouTube and back to the same point as I've gotten better I've learned oh I should have said this I should have tagged this and I go back on my old videos and I edit those things and then I see those videos get more traffic because I've thought smarter about how to tag those videos so that there's more search on it and that's helped me a lot more too I thought it was simple in the beginning just a couple words but the more you add the more people see it and it's made a huge difference recently for me because I'm getting smarter at those kind of things. Tags is very good, the tags. No, I said the tags, that was very good, yeah. I, I left that out, but tags, super important. And you could do this too on, like you're uploading videos on, on, uh, on Instagram, just the hashtags. They're not tags like in YouTube or keywords, but use the hashtags, like I said, local hashtags and, um, and related hashtags that are the expanding hashtags. And then on YouTube, you can use tags as to what is this in re related to. And then it would expose that video into an audience that's, that's uh, into whatever it is that you, you're uploading. So uh, just switching to just website for a second. Um, just just a, a couple key things is how important is an about us or a stories page? And how important are blogs to, to get some sort of consistency with, with blog posts? So, about us, okay, I'm gonna tell you the most visited page, one of the most visited page on the website for Decorative Concrete is not the About Us page, it's the Galleries page. So if you don't have a well-optimized gallery page with all the different type of projects that you do, you're missing out on something. And we've looked at hundreds of websites on this deal for Decorative Concrete. Uh, I would say that that would be more important. Now, the About Us, yeah, definitely, if you can put a video in there, you can put, you know, where you've been featured. He's been featured in I don't know how many publications and all of that, which is awesome. You can reference that. But a lot of you guys are not. So definitely, if you're a family-owned company, put a picture of your family in there. Just keep it tight. What was the other page that you... Uh, uh, just just a uh, blog post. I know that that's... Oh, the that's blogs. <laughs> all... When he reached out to us, uh, you know, the brand recognition is there, but his website was not ranking for any of the stuff that he did. What did we do? Write blog posts that support. And for the record, I had just hired a guy a year before him to do my website and it failed miserably and I had to start all over again. Yeah. Uh, so the blog posts support, think about them as topics that are related to the pages or the services that you want to rank for. And then 
be supporting pieces of content to the service pages. So say, give me give me a type of service that say you want to rank for on Google search. Well, just look at Stamp Concrete. Stamp Concrete, okay, perfect. So what, what, can, what can we write about Stamp Concrete? Say you have a service page that's just about Stamp Concrete in your service area, and then you come up with what colors or how to choose the, the, the finish, you know, color finish for your Stamp Concrete project. You see that mentioned Stamp Concrete project in there, color finishes, and now we link from that blog post page over to the Stamp Concrete page. If we do that four or five times, Google's gonna look at that and say, oh, wow, that's a very relevant page. So I like to look at it as supporting content with him. Every time we publish a blog post, it, it actually gets, goes into, into a, a media news publication. So all the time, every time we publish that, a blog post, it goes into all this news media outlet, so it, it, it looks like a very uh, authority piece of content. It gets picked up, and with all the links that it creates, you know, it helps the website rank higher. It also helps the Google My Business listing, the Google profile rank higher too, because Google's looking at those, those keywords within the blog posts. So we use it as a strategy. Um, I've seen that a lot of contractors like to tell a story about you know, a project and all of that. I think there, there's a place for that, but I like to see it as if I'm gonna really take this seriously and rank the website, make it relevant to a topic, use the gallery pages, you know, and link them all strategically, you know, uh, between pages. That makes sense. Absolutely. Do, do you guys do anything it, as far as that goes, like website, blog, things like that on on your page? We I, it's hard to. That's one of the things that's kind of fallen away from. Like it's hard to keep up with all of it. It means you got to write, and it means you got to yeah. sit down and type out a blog. With, right. It's yeah. a, a hire Danny kind of instance, probably. Seems to be where we're where we're trending here. Is uh, <laughs> just just hire Danny, and he'll he'll do all this stuff for you. <laughs> Hey guys, um, th th this is for you, so please keep the questions coming. We're just gonna keep the back and forth going here, but as we're going along, please raise your hand and, and just interrupt me and, and we'll get you guys in. So, um, uh, curious for the whole panel, um, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, or any other video platform, um, just talk a little bit about the, the length of the videos. Does it matter? Are you strategic about that? Is there a difference from Facebook to YouTube to TikTok? Why don't you go ahead and start with that, Ryan? I just got oh. one thing that's extremely important to know that I'm just now learning, because Danny's always helping me with these things. TikTok, you don't film like this, you film like this. And it drives me insane. I don't want to film like this. I've grown up all my life going to the movies, and I have to redo everything like this now, and I can't wrap my head around it at all. It's like Facebook Live. It's the same thing. We always mess that up. You turn it this way. But anyway, to, to the time, just, timing of the videos. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that TikTok and Instagram, they do better like if they're short, like 20 seconds. And then on, on YouTube, um, you, get, you make more money if it's greater than eight minutes. Yeah. So I mean, that's, if you're making YouTube videos, you want to make them as long as you can keep people's attention. That is the bottom line. Because you can watch your watch time. There's graphs. You get a full analytics page. Uh, from YouTube that yeah, you can watch in real time and you want to see how long you're keeping people's attention If they're falling off at five minutes make your video shorter than five minutes if you can keep their attention for 30 40 minutes Keep their attention for 40 minutes because like what you just said, you know They're gonna stay on YouTube longer So YouTube the algorithm loves that you're keeping people on their platform in front of their ads so they're gonna push your other videos more and obviously during the videos, we get yeah. paid for ads. So the more ads, the more we make. Per I guess video. They, they get paid for ads. They get paid for ads too. So like they, they yes, prefer them longer split. too. If, if, right. they, if you can keep people watching, then they want them longer too. So. But if people are falling off and you're making longer videos, the, alg the algorithm will also recognize that and your videos will not get any traction. You're gonna tank your channel and possibly destroy your channel if you're making videos too long, but people won't watch them for that long. YouTube is saying, hey, we're gonna show these people other videos, they don't like these videos, we're done with them. So they're not gonna push them. Yep, same thing. So my son is a live streamer. He's, he actually just um, 
got endorsed by by a manufacturer and you know they do gaming pieces but it's the same thing you see live streams but it's as long as and he knows he's like okay I don't, you know this is not going right he just shuts it down just because of that it can backfire but uh if you're creating videos for your companies you want to put yourselves out there i think in the beginning a good spot would be like three minutes or less in the beginning until you you warm up and you get better at it you know and then you can start elaborating building more elaborate because it does take a lot of time editing does take a lot of time uh by the time that you put them together um i would say reels instagram reels if you're not using it instead of using stories create Instagram reels, those are 30 seconds. You can do 15 seconds, but do 30 second or 60 second if you can keep it interesting. Anytime we do that, instead of just doing a story, we get more impressions, we get more profile visits. I mean, it just works all around and use hashtags in there. And then um, TikTok, as long as you can keep it interesting, use the voice uh, speech feature in there and, uh, and, and do it within the platform. Uh, I, I've tested grabbing the videos with the voice background and then downloading, uploading to the reels on Instagram and seeing if that works. It doesn't get as much impressions. I guess Instagram, Facebook don't like to grab the video from one platform using the other one as much. You still get impressions, don't get me wrong, but uh, Instagram does a, a great job at editing videos, but uh, 30 seconds, uh, 60 seconds. Those are the ones that are working best. Like seriously, the best, the best ones are under a minute. It, it you know those those two platforms yeah and YouTube it used to be better and it's gotten a lot slower and as far as getting impressions and making the videos work so platforms have shifted there yeah that, that perspective <clears throat> all right so uh, just uh, sticking to Facebook for a second um, just you know from the whole panel up there uh, are you guys utilizing any paid uh, parts of Facebook or are you guys just doing completely free at, at this point? And then a little bit of how effective it, it might be and is, is it worth the money? Yes, it still works. Uh, decorative concrete, it still works. I think that's a, that's a great vehicle to, to drive leads for like the one day garage floors um, kind of deal like that. It, it works for gangbusters. You could target a residential neighborhood just put a great video ad short video ad before and afters that's all you need to do before and afters a video ad and then put a lead form in there and you're going to start to get a whole bunch of leads and you can start qualifying them uh so that works um but uh as far as uh videos what i what i've seen also work is um sharing those into community groups if you're not joining all your local community groups put in the video um but if you have not tried and this is this is if you're starting now, you want to get some jobs under you know, your wings, uh, go to the marketplace on Facebook. Go to the marketplace, post uh, the type of projects that you do, and then uh, you can boost them out for a, a few bucks, only a couple of dollars, and you're going to get some, some inquiries coming your way. When you're starting out, that's a great, great vehicle to, to drive uh, local residents. Yeah. My biggest thing with uh, Facebook is being able to show the entire process, the beginning, the, the during, the middle, the end, the, the whole thing. I love being able to show people how this happens, how it works. You can do it in video also, but then it takes a lot more effort. Photographs are easy to do while you're taking, I mean, even while I'm here right now, every time I step up, I take a picture of where I'm at in my project. That is, to me, the, I love Facebook so much because I love showing people the process. I think that's the most fun of everything. It's not just always showing the finished product. Instagram is more the finished product to me a lot of times. I don't really do a lot in between. Um, one thing I was thinking about though while he was talking is that the, the little video things you guys do for me that are photographs. I mean, is that considered oh, yeah. a video? That's considered a video, yeah. But so it's like a the gallery. other thing too is we keep talking about making videos, but we're not talking about the fact that you could take all these photographs and then put them into a video. It's you don't sure. actually have to stand there and film it. You can just document the crap out of it and then turn it into a slideshow and, and that's still a video too. So it's another way to get started because then you have a lot more control over what you wanna see and putting up some, some descriptions of what's going on. You don't really have to full out edit and video and do all the other things too. So that's another thing I, I just thought about while he was talking. They, they do that all the time with all my pictures because I have a ridiculous amount of content. I, I have so much content, I don't know what to do with it. 
And, and that's not normal. I mean, he, he deals with companies that are just starting out. They don't have any content. So he's able to take all my photographs and just constantly make these cool arrangements and make it look cool and have fun with it uh, that I would never have thought of doing because I always just think photographs. I wasn't really thinking video with it. So that's a whole other way to look at how to do a video a lot easier with what you already have that you can use to your advantage to practice with and things like that too. All right, so we got about 10 minutes left here. Um, any last uh, questions or thoughts from the audience? All right, we're gonna go down the line. Somebody's just starting out, just started a decorative concrete company. Um, just in the next 10 minutes here, just um, what would be the number one piece of advice just to get started? Number one piece of advice is what you just said, get started. That's the hardest thing. We <laughs> talked about it again, mentioned it earlier. Last night is, uh, a lot of concrete contractors are old school they have the old school mentality <laughs> some guys don't even have a website yet and uh, what i would say is get started uh, social media is a huge open door um, I, I can't even emphasize enough how much of an open door there is right now for social media uh, i mean you can jump on TikTok and develop a following faster than you could have ever imagined uh, you can put your name out there you can build a brand you could build a business off of TikTok within several months you know if you want to do something you can build a brand off TikTok. Um, but there's a time coming where things get saturated and it's harder to break into just like youtube's harder to break into than it used to be obviously but that's my number one piece of advice is get started you know get on facebook get on instagram start learning start posting start learning how to make little videos use iMovie it's it's a real simple uh, piece of editing software that you can get started on uh, just start playing around with it start adding music Pretty soon you're going to be watching your screen, what you just made, a little video, and you're going to smile and be like, that's cool, man. I did that. And it's not that hard to do. I did it. Uh, I think everybody, if, if not everybody, it's not for everybody, but you'll know if it's for you. But that's my piece of advice is just, just to dive in, man. It's an open door. Awesome. Danny? Uh, good stuff. All right. So <clears throat> you have, you're just getting started. No money or money? With no money? Zero limited problem. money, limited money. Okay, so every platform is different and every platform is gonna require a different amount of time. Google Business Profile or Google My Business. Make sure you start getting reviews as soon as you can. Same thing on Facebook. If you're not collecting reviews, make your first couple of projects your best projects and document the heck out of those. And then on Facebook, I would as I'm finishing the projects, I will share them into all the local community groups and say, hey, I just finished this project at this garage floor, this uh, new stamp concrete project. What do you guys think? Feel free to reach out if you need any. So you can start getting some word of mouth or referrals that way if you have no money. If you do have some money, a couple of hundred bucks to put into Facebook ads. I would recommend doing that at the very least, especially in the decorative concrete. It's very visual. Um, so I would start there. Claim your, your business names or the profile names that you want to run under because then there's times where you don't claim it in all the platforms and then they're run out and then you're wondering, man, do I have to change the name, short code, you know, what, what do I have to do? So uh, make sure your, your business name, if you're thinking about starting out too, uh, don't make it too complicated to spell out. Please, guys, don't because, uh, you know, it, it just makes, uh, makes it hard to build that brand. Uh, but documenting everything, every day should be a documented process if you can't. If you can, you know, stories, reels, I mean, that's it, it's for free. Yeah. Rick, number one piece of advice. I, I think the number one thing is to make a website. Honestly, I, I, it's not that hard to do. They're not that expensive. I'm not saying to do that because you're gonna get up on the search engines. It is literally that when you meet someone, go look at my Facebook or my website. Just, you gotta have somewhere for them to go to. It's not hard to make. And you can do whatever you want. You can add things to it. I just think that those things are extremely important. I think they always have been, and I don't think that's changed. The social media is great, but the website's always gonna be there. No matter what happens with all the changes in social media, when Facebook becomes irrelevant and we're only living in a world of TikTok, I will go nuts. But um, you know, I just think that the websites are not gonna change and they're always, they, they've been relevant, they're still relevant, and I would still focus on starting a website as soon as you can. Cool. I agree with the website thing. And then the second thing would be, um, I think that it's really undervalued like to call contractors and to, to go see general contractors and, and like to be in front of people. Because 
it doesn't, it doesn't cost, it's just time. It just takes time to do. But um, most commercial companies will let you get on their bid list just if you just call and ask. So I just think it's you know actual manual labor of, of getting in front of people. Yeah, and all of that is, all of this is perfect information and we should be doing all those things and like Tim said, going to meet him. You will get the work. When you get the work, will you be a man and a woman of integrity that says what you're gonna do and you knock it out. And that's, we, our, our portfolio was built on, we did what we said we're gonna do. And you do it, the people talk about it, they depend on you, you know? So with that added on to all that, just do what you say you're gonna do, you know? That's, that's some great advice there. Get started, market on Facebook, have a website, get in front of customers, and do what you said out what you said you were doing, do be a man of your word. So good stuff, guys. Appreciate you guys all being here. Um, anybody um, in the audience that wasn't here when we got started, anybody who's watching this on YouTube, make sure you check out Victory Outdoor Services, Concrete Marketing Crew, Concrete Mystique, and Tim DCVA, and Hacking Concrete Podcast. So thanks for coming, guys. Thank thanks, you. you guys, for being here. Uh, there'll be another one of these tomorrow morning, I believe, at around 10 o'clock.